Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the Cody Institute at St. Francis Xavier University. I'm very pleased to be welcoming you here and to be meeting here on Mi'kma'ki, which is the ancestral and unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This territory is covered by the Treaties of Peace and Friendship, which Mi'kmaq and Maliseet peoples first signed with the British Crown in 1725. These tre the treaties do not deal with the surrender of lands and resources, but in fact recognized Mi'kmaq and Maliseet title and established the rules for what was to be an ongoing relationship between nations. So welcome and thank you for coming today as we share with you some very exciting news. My name is Eileen Alma, and I'm the director of the Cody's Women's Leadership and in Indigenous Programming, and I head the International Center for Women's Leadership. And together with the Cody leadership team, which includes Gord Cunningham, Anthony Scoggins, and Jamie Smith, and our entire Cody team, it's really wonderful to see all of you here today um, on this wonderful day in March. And I also especially want to thank those of you who are all right, uh, right now joining us live on Facebook um, from all over the world, and send very special greetings to our graduates um, and partners in Canada and in abroad. Today we're joined by some wonderful people who continue to play such a supportive role to Cody Institute, helping us, advising us, championing us. Um, and these include our own member of parliament, Mr. Sean Fraser, sorry, Sean Fraser, parliamentary secretary to the finance minister, now also parliamentary secretary to the minister of middle class prosperity, Senator Mary Coyle, former VP and director of the Cody Institute, former director also of the McKenna Center for Leadership here at St. FX, Sister Brenda Lee, and the entire Saint Mar uh, congregation of St. Martha's who have been with us with our, by our side very, right from the very beginning of the Cody Institute. And Dr. Kevin Wamsley, our interim president of St. FX uh, at, the, at this university and the members of the President's Council. I also see members here today of Moses Cody's family and really grateful to have you here. Thank you so much. This is a very special time for many reasons. First of all, starting with the local and close to home. We're currently in the midst of, our, of celebrating our 60th anniversary here at the Cody Institute. First established in December 1959 in the name of Father Moses Cody, who was the former director of the Extension Department and a co-founder of the Anaganish Movement. Second, we're celebrating later today the ninth cohort graduation of our Indigenous Women and Community Leadership Program. That's a, the 2019-20 class is graduating and we're having an online celebration with 18 amazing First Nations, Métis, Inuit women from across this country. Last week we celebrated the end of a wonderful class of women le leaders online, an online course, who are advancing peace in their communities and it was advancing women's leadership in peace building and community um, that, was, that was held for seven weeks online. Globally, there's also many important touchstones that we're commemorating. First of all, the International Women's Day takes place in just four days. It's an occasion in honor of women that's been celebrated since 1911, and every year we seek to include and ensure that all women are included in that celebration. Second is that 2020 is also the commemoration, commemoration of Beijing plus 25 marking the 25th anniversary of the Fourth World Congress Conference on Women and the adoption of the Beijing Declaration of Platform of Action in 1995, which reaffirms the fundamental principle of human rights of women and of the girl child. That there, it's, an in, in, ah, sorry, it's an alienable, integral, and an indivisible part of universal human rights. And in 2020, we are also marking the five-year milestone um, that's being reached towards the Sustainable Development Goals of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, in which gender equality features prominently. And moreover, 2020 also marks the 20th anniversary of the UN Security Council 1325 on Women, Peace and Security, calling on all actors locally and globally to increase the participation of women and incorporate gender perspectives in peace and security efforts. So that's a lot for 2020. The theme of this year's International Women's Day is an equal world is an enable world. 
And we ask ourselves, how will we help forge a gender equal world? We can do so by celebrating women's achievements. We can raise awareness against bias. We can take, equal, we can take action for equality. And this has been the imperative of the Cody Institute's work, for we recognize that the health and well-being for all, or abundance for all, cannot exclude more than 50% of the world's population. Nor can it ignore that those have been, who have been historically marginalized or underrepresented, underrepresented by virtue of, uh, of ability, of race, of class, of caste, of socioeconomic status, gender identity, they can't be excluded from decision-making processes. So today's announcement moves us forward at the Cody Institute and abroad, around the world, in bold new ways. So without further ado, please welcome Sean Fraser to make his remarks. Uh, hello and welcome everyone. It's an absolute pleasure to, uh, to be here today. There's quite a few familiar faces in the audience. Um, I'm so proud to be here on my, uh, the campus of my alma mater here at St. of X. You know, every time I have the opportunity uh, to talk about uh, this place, uh, I usually try to uh, draw attention to the importance that this institution has had uh, to me personally, not just as a member of Parliament, but as a, uh, a citizen of the world. You know, this campus is, is really the first place that my eyes were open to the fact that there is a world that was much bigger than my own life experience. Uh, I had the opportunity to uh, certainly learn sitting in the classrooms, but the greatest education that I took uh, from this place uh, was from my friends and colleagues who grew up with different backgrounds and life experiences than the one that I grew up with. Um, the privilege of studying uh, on campus at St. of X is, is one that is not lost on me. Uh, to be able to take lessons from those who may have uh, grown up down the street with a different life experience is one thing, uh, but to be exposed to perspectives that were de developed on the other side of the world uh, is something that will live with me forever. Uh, nowhere on campus is that more true uh, than at the Cody Institute. Uh, you know, we get into uh, great debates in, in Parliament and uh, in, in the community about the importance of, uh, of international development, uh, but in a, in a globalized world, um, we have to recognize uh, globalization is a social fact. Whether you like it or not is not the point. Uh, we have to make a decision as to whether we're going to adopt policies and programs and develop institutions that actually help us uh, manage global change in a way that serves the interest of the world's most vulnerable and, in fact, the interests uh, of our own country as well. Uh, this can become sometimes, unfortunately, very divisive on issues about uh, support for refugees and immigration. Uh, but if we recognize that by contributing to a more peaceful, stable world, uh, we'll actually serve the interests of Canada, not just our economic interests, but our social interests as well. Um, and I think there's a real opportunity to embrace international development uh, as one strategy to build uh, peace and security around the world, uh, to develop the economies of our trading partners and serve the interests of, of Canadians at large. Of course, the Cody Institute plays a, an important role, and I, I hate to uh, frame it this way, uh, but it's quite easy for us to outsource the good work that the government should be doing to the actual experts who can carry out the work through the ins institutes like uh, where we are today. Uh, the relationship between the federal government and the Cody has been going on really since uh, this institute's inception um, over six de decades ago. Uh, successive federal governments, thankfully, both liberal and conservative, have been excellent funding partners for this, this organization. Um, obviously, there's been certain challenges in, in pa the past few years, but I'm so thrilled to share that uh, due to the partnership between the Cody, the university, and the federal government, we're able to move forward and, and begin the next chapter of this, this institution. And uh, I'm so pleased to share uh, that at the beginning of this next chapter, uh, we'll kick off with the uh, a contribution of the federal government of $9.8 million over the next five years to support this new Engage Women's Empowerment and, uh, I forgot the name, Active Citizenship Program. <laughs> I knew the name, see when I have a crutch, I got a break from my nose, I knew the name of the program was sitting behind me, I had to turn around for it. Uh, look, the timing of this announcement couldn't be more appropriate. Of course, uh, International Women's Day is, is just around the corner, uh, and the focus of Engage Women's Empowerment and Active Citizenship is to strengthen uh, women's participation and gender equality uh, around the world. 
Uh, more specifically, uh, the project is going to support organizations and individuals in India, Ethiopia, Tanzania, uh, Tanzania uh, Bangladesh, and, and Haiti. Uh, of course, as well, there's benefits to the local community. I think sometimes uh, we're accused, uh, as uh, different governments of different stripes will be accused of uh, sending Canadian money to uh, countries on the other side of the world. Uh, aside from the, the case that I tried to make at the beginning of my remarks, that I believe this is in our, our self-interest, uh, there's actually people working in our community on this campus campus who are helping pursue international development. Uh, this is an investment that's going to serve the interest of this community here in Antigonish as well as, as the global interest. Uh, more specifically, the, the project is going to uh, help uh, develop uh, programs in leadership development, uh, expand social enterprise, uh, climate adaptation, leadership and management education, and, and discussing the future of work with a view to reduce uh, poverty and promote gender equality around the world. I couldn't be more thrilled uh, with uh, today's announcement. It took a lot of work for us to get here over the past couple of years, as I expect uh, as some of my counterparts might share at the microphone. Uh, to conclude, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here, but more importantly, congratulations uh, for the work that Cody continues to do. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sean, and thank you to the Government of Canada for this incredible announcement and for your own tremendous commitment to us uh, and to feminist international assistance and gender equality here in online with us. But let me add here also how much personal support that she's been providing to me and to other members of our, of our team here at Cody and Extension as we've continued to look at ways in which we can best support women leaders and gender equality at home and abroad. So I extend my thanks and, I, and appreciation and welcome Mary to the podium. Thanks, Eileen. Uh, good morning, everyone. I'm even shorter than you, Eileen. <laughs> and thank you, Sean. Uh, it, it, it's, I feel like I've come home here, uh, seeing all of you here, and I know that Many people who are part of the Cody home are watching this uh, at a distance, but uh, what a great day this is. What outstanding news, Fraser mentioned, and for the future of our world, frankly. That's what this is about. Ila Bat, founder of Cody Partner, the self-employed women's association, Sewa, which has two million members throughout India, once said, it is the women who are the leaders in change, and without their participation, poverty can never be removed. Closer to home, Emily Murphy, Canadian judge who initiated the person's case related to women's eligibility to be appointed to the Senate of Canada, women like me, said, I think women can save civilization. In June 2010, 10 years ago, Building on the year, years of Antigonish movement work in women's leadership and decades of Cody International Institute work in gender and women's economic empowerment, inspired to devote Cody's next 50 years to truly changing the course of history, the Institute announced the establishment of the International Center for Women's Leadership. The United Nations Agenda 2030, Sustainable Development 2010, 10 years ago, building on the year, years of Antigonish movement work in women's leadership and decades of Cody International Institute work in gender and women's economic empowerment, inspired to devote Cody's next 50 years to truly changing the course of history, the Institute announced the establishment of the International Center for Women's Leadership. The United Nations Agenda 2030, Sustainable Development Goal number five, Achieve Gender Equality, is said to be the best chance we have to meet the most pressing issues of our time. Economic issues, health issues, climate change, violence against women, and escalating conflicts. Today, there are 330 million women and girls across the world living on less than $1.90 per day, today, 20, in the year 2020. UN Women is imploring all of us to step up our efforts now to meet this gender equality goal. The new partnership announced today between St. of X's Cody Institute, its global partners in India, Bangladesh, Tanzania, Ethiopia, and Haiti, its many private Canadian funding partners, and Cody's long-term 
partner in women's empowerment, the Government of Canada, all enable Cody to be a significant accelerator in supporting and equipping women to achieve their goals. All involved in creating and shaping the vision of this engaged partnership deserve to be lauded today. Canada's first black member of the provincial legislature, Rosemary Brown, once said, we must open the doors and we must see to it that they remain open so that others can pass through. Today, colleagues, friends, we are gathered to celebrate the opening of many doors for and by women, women of the world, women and their families, women and their communities, women and their societies. Thank you to all present for your contributions to this vital cause. I'm so proud of you, Gord, and the whole Cody team. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. We know how much that you share that this commitment, and that was just present in, the, in, the, in your speaking points just now, that commitment to gender equality and to women's leadership, for which we thank you so much. And I'd now like to welcome CNFX President Dr. Kevin Walmsley to share his remarks. Kevin has also been steadfast in his commitment to the work of Cody and the extension, uh, and particularly has demonstrated that in the ways that he's taken time to meet with each of our cohorts, and especially the cohorts of women leaders, whether they're from around the world or they're from here in Canada, the Indigenous Women's Programming. So again, I'd like to thank Kevin for that support and welcome him to the podium. Kevin. Thank you very much and good morning. It's wonderful to see uh, everyone here. And uh, this is a particularly important announcement for our university and for Cody and for women around the world. And I think that when we talk about gender equality, it starts at the level of the individual. And so you've heard that idiom that behind every su successful man, well, you could add behind every su successful woman and say that that's not true. It's not true at all. Behind, in front of in front of every successful man, in front of every successful woman, is a whole group of people that came before them. It's a whole group of people that challenge their, challenges them every day and will challenge them in the future. And those people need to be named. And don't be ashamed of it at the personal level. So I would say mother, social activist aunt, four sisters, wife, daughter, these are the people who stand in front of me personally. And you need to know and recognize the people who have put you in your place and they have come before you and are with you. And then we think of on campus. Stand here in front of the president with the campus behind you, it's not true at all. The president stands in the background. Who's in front? Well, there's Mary Coyle. There's June Weber. These are the leaders that bring these projects to fruition. There's the sisters of St. Martha standing in front of us every day representing. There are all of the scholars on campus, all of the women who have been fighting for equality for their entire careers. These are the people who are standing in front of us and need to be recognized. And then we turn to Cody, and wouldn't Moses Cody be smiling a bit today? Moses Cody worked in a particular era and was very interested in righting the wrongs of inequality. And maybe gender wasn't at the top of the list, but it is today, and that's why we're here. And I think that what better organization than Cody embedded within St. FX to take on this great work. And so we talk about the, the title here, and it's a little bit, it's a good title, but we have to understand what it means. Empowering women, we're not here to give empowerment. That's not how it works. Women will empower themselves. People, men and women, open doors for women around the world, and they will empower themselves, and we need to recognize that and uh, uh, as Eileen has said, we have brought some wonderful women to our campus and they have changed us. I tell them when they're here, you're not here to be changed by us. We are here to learn from you as well and bringing so much to the table. And that's what this is all about, recognizing women's contributions throughout society, making economic and social changes, because frankly, historically, men have got it wrong. But we're fixing it and we're recognizing the value of women around the world and this great gift from the Government of Canada, from Global Affairs Canada, and the work that Sean Fraser has done to bring this to fruition, because he wears an X-ring and understands what we stand for here, and that's equality for all. And this $10 million is going to go so far in transforming the world, 
And yes, helping women to empower themselves and to make social change in the communities around the world. And what better thing is there than that to celebrate on this day? So we should celebrate those who stand in front of us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kevin. And you've led us now to a really great place because this couldn't have happened without those wonderful people that we've mentioned now that have been supporting us, whether it's been Senator Coyle or it's been Sean Frazier or the many people at Global Affairs Canada, our own leadership team here at the university. But I'd like to call out especially the fantastic staff of the Cody Institute, um, who all of them, every single one of them, played a role in getting this proposal forward. Led by the talented director of education, Anthony Scoggins, wherever Anthony is, They've been instrumental in putting together the details of the project with our partners in India, Ethiopia, Haiti, Bangladesh, and Tanzania, who equally put in a lot of work. So let me now turn over to two of those staff members who are representing the team, uh, Brianne Peters and Eric Smith, who will give you a little bit more of an outline of what the project's about and also introduce our partners through a short video. So Eric and Brianne. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> um, welcome, and thank you so much for being here. Uh, as Sean said, it's nice to see so many uh, familiar faces. Um, this is my colleague. Eric Smith. I manage uh, the Institute's monitoring, evaluation, and learning. And I'm a program teaching staff member here at the CODI. Um, Eric and I are recently back from our inaugural planning meetings in Ethiopia uh, with our five partners. Uh, where we started to, uh, as Jimmy Tompkins would say, uh, put hands and feet on our new Engage project. And to hear uh, from our partners face to face um, really made our relationships and this project feel very real. And we're really excited for a number of reasons. Uh, first is really the commonality of our overarching approaches. Uh, despite our very different country contexts, which underscores not only the importance of gender equality and women's leadership across the globe, but also our collective approach to put citizens, in this case, uh, the collective efforts of, of women-led movements uh, at the center of this initiative. As has always been at the heart of CODI, our partners also recognize the importance of starting with the strengths and assets that exist in all of these communities rather than predetermining or prescribing what they think the problems and the needs may be. While our partners are taking very common approaches, the issues that they are facing are quite diverse, uh, ranging from climate change to economic justice to political participation uh, to working with all levels of government to ensure that uh, policies and budgets are sensitive to the realities of women on the ground. Uh, simply put, we are working with women who are going to change the rules of the game. This project's focus on co-learning will provide valuable on-the-ground experiences to share both locally and globally, combining Cody's mission to provide practical education programs um, with academic rigor. The final point I want to make is about the caliber of our partners and of our relationships. Uh, these partners were selected very consciously and very deliberately, and they are not a one-off. We've learned much from them, not, over, not, not just over the last year as we wrote this proposal, but um, over the course of decades in, in many cases. And because of these long-standing relationships, we share values of mutual learning, trust, and solidarity around issues we are all facing in both the Global North and the Global South, which has always been something that I take pride in working at the CODI and working with our graduates. I know that you're supposed to say these kinds of promotional things at the launches of new programs, um, but I do genuinely believe that as a result of this project, after five years, uh, we are going to have stronger CODI programs, uh, more responsive partner organizations, and communities where women are recognized and celebrated for the contributions they are making, they have always made, that have often gone overlooked or undervalued. 
So we will certainly have something to share with the world. So I will turn it over to Eric to talk about where we are now and next steps. Thanks, Brianne. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pick up on one of your final points. You know, while each partner shares common concerns, we also have unique approaches and entry points to understanding women's leadership, gender equality, and feminist approaches. As a result, this is the kind of partnership that will transform our ways of thinking and working. It will also foster innovative approaches. Over the last year, we've laid a strong foundation for this based on shared vision, trust, and commitment. Our aspiration is to carry this forward over the next five years and beyond, to achieve more together than we could in isolation. So where are we now? We're currently looking at the status of women in each country, their participation in economic, political, and social life, and their assets and their desires. We are also identifying our own organization's strengths, as well as areas for growth and change. These will guide us as we support nearly 20,000 women and male champions to advance gender equitable, sustainable development. We will engage about 1,500 in advanced leadership and train the trainer certificates, 9,000 in community-based training and education programs, 8,000 in advocacy activities, and 1,000 government representatives at the local, regional, and national levels. Beyond that, we expect Engage to have indirect impacts on at least a quarter of a million other citizens and many women's rights organizations. These are significant numbers. They speak to the power of combining economic development, leadership training, organizational capacity, and collective efforts to protest injustice and claim human rights. Soon, we will be co-delivering local training, co-facilitating regional courses, forming communities of practice, and welcoming participants to campus for upcoming courses. You'll have the opportunity to meet our partners, see them around town, and give them a warm Anaganish welcome. Here's a preview of some of the people you'll meet and what they're looking forward to. SEVA is a trade union, a national trade union of over 1.9 million poor, self-employed women workers. The good thing about uh, WISE is for the last 22 years, it has been supporting women and girls, and always it is one on uh, women's economic empowerment. One of the major uh, trust area of CCDB is to reduce poverty. Clay is a leadership development foundation that was founded after the earthquake hit Haiti in 2010. CGNP, we decided to focus on gender and budgeting initiative. We do have established around eight city saving and credit cooperative in Addis Ababa alone. We're really very grateful to Cody International Institute to, to take such initiative and involved different partners including CCDB. The audiences that we serve in Haiti are the leaders that are working to transform their communities by using the local resources in creative, innovative ways and bringing partners other communities, other leaders, and driving Haitian-driven, Haitian-led, citizen-led change. Without gender equality, there's no development. So I'm sure once we empower marginalized communities and women, that's where we can we can talk about the, uh, development and true democracy. The Engage project came at the right time. It's a real opportunity which these poor young women workers from the informal economy would not be able to get in other circumstances. We are keen to develop women leadership in the uh, climate hotspot area. So I'm so looking forward to see how we can co-designing and work together on improving our intervention for the empowerment of women. Under the ENGAGE program, Clay is going to deepen our support to leaders that are at the more advanced level of the network of leaders that we work with. This is a really wonderful opportunity. At SEVA, we always believe that women to work women organizing is the best way of empowering women workers. The Engage partnership presents a very innovative approach and an alternative approach to the kinds of partnerships that we've seen at the international level. We will have the chance to uh, put in place the women to women, strengthen the women to women organizing across the globe. Cody is investing the kinds of resources that will 
change the kind of partnerships that we end up having with the partners under Engage. I speak here not only as Mansi Shah but as a representative of over 1.9 million women workers from India and we are all looking forward to the implementation of this project. This is not just lip service, these are actual resources that are going to be contributed. It's a cooperation between CCDB and Cody. It's excellent. I do believe that we will reach our destination together. Thank you very much. We, we can learn a lot from each other. That's what I feel. And I'm really excited about the combination of the partners chosen for this program. Thanks, Cody, for approaching us and uh, support us to be on this project. We so appreciate you. And also for Global, Global Affairs Canada, who also support the project for all these five countries. Thank you so much, Eric and Brianne, and to all of our partners um, from the, each of those five countries. I'd now like to invite Gord Cunningham, the Executive Director of Cody and Extension, to share his remarks. Gord. Teco, a famous civil rights leader, this has been a long time coming. Um, Kevin, I think there's times you wondered if this day would ever come. And I want to thank you for making a special effort to be here today because I know it was difficult. So much appreciated. There's a few people I want to thank specifically, and I'm going to start with you, Sean. You've been thanked already, but having been through this with you every step of the way, uh, thanks for supporting us from day one. And uh, it's been a long process, but the fact that we are here today is a testament to the work that you've done to make this happen. So thank you. And I'd like to thank Senator Mary Coyle. I still stumble over that title sometimes. Um, for starting the Center for Women's Leadership, for starting us down this path. And to you, Eileen, for carrying that on. Mary, you've also been with us every step of the way, providing advice and connecting us to people we need to speak to. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. The group that I, I, I want to thank the most right now in this room, though, is a group that Eileen alluded to, is the team that developed the proposal right here at Cody. Um, you mentioned our fearless colleague, Anthony Scoggins, who uh, led the team. He also, at the same time, led the complete redesign of our education programs. So imagine that. I mean, that is an amazing feat. The members of the team that uh, worked very, very hard on this include Eric Smith, who you, who you uh, already heard from, Catherine Irving, Eileen, who you've already heard from, Julian Landry, who is in Sierra Leone right now, and Sheila Savage, who, who recently retired. Other colleagues that supported the effort include uh, Yogesh Gore, who just literally last night returned from India, um, Kathy Sears, Corinne Cash, Naima Chowdhury, Wendy kreglin and Brianne Peters. Now this team produced not only a top-notch proposal, and according to Global Affairs folks that I spoke to, it was an excellent proposal, but they also brought everybody together at Cody at a time when we were going through some difficult periods. The work together that they did developed a kind of esprit de corps among colleagues that was much needed. And I thank the team for doing that. Just to give you a sense, a greater sense of the dedication of, of our colleagues, uh, we just heard last night, and this is a new announcement, a new global affairs announcement, is that uh, Yogesh Gore and Eric Smith were successful in um, uh, getting to the final stage of a uh, proposal for Global Affairs Canada to the um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Eric, the uh, Fund for Innovation and Transformation. This is an amazing feat, and I know that both those colleagues put in an awful lot of time over the Christmas holidays to write this proposal because of the deadline, and here we are on the verge of yet another successful announcement in partnership with the Government of Canada. Um, before I close, I, I'd really like to reinforce something that Brianne said 
in her remarks, and that is that this project is quite different from many that I have worked on over my development career. It truly is partner and community driven. And that's not easy to do. I remember um, when our team came back from the meeting in, in Addis Ababa, I remember talking to Brianne and, and she said, I can't believe that, you know, that we managed to get funding for a truly community-driven project. Uh, because it's just not the norm. Often you have to have predetermined results and you have to fit into that kind of log frame in order to reach the milestones of the project. In this case, most of those results have not been preordained. They're going to emerge from what the various organizations and communities and women's groups want to do. And that's really unusual, and I thank the Government of Canada for that kind of flexibility in, in allowing us to, 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 to embark on such a project. In closing, uh, I'd like to thank our communications team, Brian and Jenny and Sue, who helped make this day possible, and their colleagues in the next building, Kyler and Janine. Uh, this kind of collaboration between Cody and various other parts of the university is getting better and better all the time, and today is a perfect example of that. I'd like to lastly thank all of you for taking time out of your day on a rainy, uh, what day is it today? <laughs> Thursday morning, and, uh, and coming out to help us celebrate. So thank you very much. So as you can see, we have a lot to be excited about. This is not just about Cody or its amazing partners, Sewa, Wise, CCDB, TNGP, or the work of Global Affairs Canada and the federal government, but this is about the ways in which together in a unique partnership, we are supporting not thousands, but actually millions of women and their communities in these five countries and beyond. So, Thank you so much for coming out today to celebrate this, the start of a, something that's really important. And also to acknowledge the really good work that's been happening here at the Cody Institute and Extension I mean, in the past that has led us to, to this point. 